working. Stop missing video. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but we are, I think, live. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Sievers. This is my first YouTube live broadcast. If you could give me a round of applause from your sofa, I would appreciate that. Um, I'm so excited because I love filming for you, my wonderful fans and readers and clients and friends, and I think it's so much fun to be in front of the camera I did not love to film when I was always edited down because you kind of lost some of the Mark Seavers isms. So this is live, unedited, unfiltered, and we're gonna have so much fun with this MJF Moments series. So today is all about easy and elegant weekly flowers. So if you follow me on Instagram, my handle is Mark J. Seavers. Um, you saw that I was at the flower market today. We started off this morning, Ryan and I, we went to breakfast with our friends, Forrest and Art, and we, um, hold on, Ryan's, Ryan's doing something with the camera. There we go. <laughs> we're, we may have a little uh, technical difficulty along the way, but we're going to get everything worked out. So like I was saying, we started this morning with breakfast with our friends, and then we took them to the flower market. We got some flowers, they got some flowers, and I'm here to show you all of the inspiration that I brought home today. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you a few little uh, tricks here. So this is the, gonna be the main angle going forward. I hope you love it. Um, here's another angle so you can see exactly what I'm doing on my kitchen island. Isn't this great? And then my other camera angle so far is of my little cozy kitchen, which I love that I can then leave my living room, dining room, and then come and visit you in my kitchen and show you all of the beautiful blooms that I brought home today and uh, that we're going to arrange. So first, I brought home these beautiful spray roses in kind of a lime and blush color, which are so beautiful. And I brought home some beautiful pink stock flowers that have a really fabulous scent. Love those. I brought back some Veronica and white, which are these kind of, they look like wildflowers, and I just think they're really pretty and very earthy. I brought back giant fresh lavender. I don't know if you can see this, but this is like three feet of lavender, which is so fragrant and very French. I have beautiful stalks of rosemary that I brought back from the market as well. So you can probably, if you have a wonderful garden or front yard or backyard, you can probably grow a lot of this stuff. I live in a high rise, so don't have any outdoor space. So I rely on my flower markets and grocery stores to bring all the inspiration to me. This is a lovely little herb bouquet. We have dried lavender buds and some rosemary and then gorgeous little wild flowers. I kind of went a little crazy at the market, but that's okay. And then beautiful white tulips. Just very easily findable. Is that even a word? And then this is a flower that I've used many times, and it is called limonium. I can never pronounce it. I always forget. And it's kind of, it looks, it's white and lavender and some deep purple and it too has a gorgeous almost like a jasmine uh, little aroma so i love that flower as well so i'm going to take you back we're going to go back into the living room here and i'm going to talk to you about the few vases that i have as well so for vases i chose four different kinds i have you can see I have a kind of a French pickle jar in two different sizes. I'm going to give you the overhead so you can see the, the uh, circumference difference. And then these small little plain simple cylindric 
vases that you can get at the grocery store and then kind of a footed vase as well. So I think we're going to start out with the tallest of the French pickle mason jars and we're going to go back into the kitchen because I think this is just so fun and cool that I can take you through my apartment and welcome you so intimately into my cozy kitchen. So we're going to start first with this gorgeous super tall lavender and I thought the lavender and the limonium would be so beautiful together. So we'll start here. I didn't really premeditate any of this because I wanted it to be live and fun and off the cusp for both you and I. Hi everybody. See that isn't this so fun? You can like it's like you're in my living room with me. We're we're drinking well, I'm drinking tea to start. Uh as we move forward with these MJS moment series on YouTube, uh, there'll be wine drinking and probably martini drinking as well. So uh, feel free to always uh, partake with me. That's your tea. That's my Earl Grey and rose tea you can get on markteasers.com. Okay, so here we go. So this is the tallest pickle jar that I have right here. And as you can see, <laughs> these are, can you see how tall these are? These are about three and a half feet. So they're quite large. So clearly too big for and too tall for this pickle jar. So when I'm thinking about arrangements, first we want to figure out where we want to put them in the space. This um, particular jar I love to leave on the side of the island um, throughout the week. Gives it some height and I just think it looks really beautiful. So naturally these stems kind of already give us a visual point of where we want them to sit blooms wise on the rim of this jar. So we can just kind of eyeball it a little bit. Fresh water, of course, and these stems aren't very woody, so we don't have to worry about, cut that a little bit more, we don't have to worry about uh, cutting them, um, oops, <laughs> something's flying everywhere. We don't have to worry about cutting them in a diagonal or anything that you do want to cut them on the bias just so that they drink the most water possible. And then with any stems and blooms, you want to make sure that there's no foliage, greens, leafage, blooms in the water that will create lots of mold and we don't want mold. Can you see me? <laughs> so these are still too tall. So we just keep cutting. I'd rather cut them sh many times over than cut them too short the first time and then not have them be exactly what I want for the arrangement. So truth be told, stopping here makes it look very beautiful. These pickle jars are, have a dome inside of them. So sometimes I have to kind of loosen them up. I don't like anything too tight or too contrived looking. I really like flowers to look natural and beautiful and See how that looks on camera. See, even, I mean, you could stop here and be completely finished, but I love this gorgeous lavender. So we're going to cut the stalks off of this as well. And then, isn't this so beautiful? So this is sprigs of lavender, and I think it's the perfect height. I'm going to strip off all of these leaves, and we'll change angles so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to strip off all of this foliage. It does still have a fragrance to it, but we don't want that in the water because it does create mold. So we're going to quickly strip all these stems. The quickest way to do it is run your hand backward against the stems. They all come off and easy peasy. You guys having fun so far? I am. It's kind of nice being live because I really don't have to worry about what I'm saying or being edited down. So you can, uh, I feel like I have much more freedom, which is good. If I swear once in a while, I'm sorry, but, you know, stuff that happens. So, okay. Let's go a little quicker here for you. The other good thing about this, too, is that after you're done with this process, your hands do smell like lavender. So... I've not quite seen lavender, fresh lavender this tall before. Um, 
in grocery stores or at the market. So, okay, so that's perfect. Get back to this angle for you. And then, so these are beautiful sprigs of lavender. So what I like to do is first just fill it in around the edges. I like this to look very earthy, very natural, and I cannot believe how amazing this smells too. This is really nice. So I'm gonna create a little bit of an edge with the lavender. And just kind of arrange it around. I'm tucking the stems into, into the other flowers to give them a little bit of uh, stability so they don't fall over. And just kind of making this as simple and beautiful as possible. Whoa, that one was really high. look at this. This is so fabulous. Get one ready on the front here. It's kind of a rainy and chilly day today, so it's currently thunderstorming outside. I don't know if you can hear the thunder, which is why I'm in my jammies. Plus, I figure it's Saturday, so after I came home from the market, I decided to climb back in my jammies. All right. So here is, so I mean, this is not, this is like basic, not even arranging flowers. This is just putting beautiful things together, making sure you get a little bit of texture. So choosing flowers that have different texture, but same color palette, I think works really well together. And if you're not used to arranging flowers, sticking to the same color palette is really foolproof, if you will. Um, everything always just looks so beautiful. So I think we're gonna put this lavender aside for a minute and I'm gonna add in some white tulips. So let's go get the tulips. Hey guys, isn't this fun? All right, so I have these tulips. I think these tulips will look really beautiful kind of around that edge of that cylinder and creating a little bit of more visual interest. So let's give this a try and see how this works. So here's tulips. We're gonna pull back the outer leaves and give it a good snip. And let's see if this, yeah, that looks beautiful. So you can see the tulips are gonna give this a little bit of extra drama. It's gonna kind of fill out that edge a little bit. And pulling out some of that white in that linoleum. No, that's a, no, that's not linoleum. Linoleum is a flooring. So, uh, <laughs> limonium, limonium, I think is what it is. So just turning this around, giving this a little edge. I think this is so pretty. So if you have questions throughout this particular broadcast or others, please leave them in the comments and I will make sure that everything gets answered um, afterwards. I wanna make sure that you have all your questions answered so that you can recreate all of this at home. I think I'm gonna use all these tulips. Again, I'm just pulling back the leaves, doing a quick little cut and yeah, I think this is really, really great. I lost my front. So this, this vase, because it has this little glass disc, does have a front to it, so I can always understand where my center point is. So I think that looks so beautiful. Clean up some of this green. Tidy it up for you guys and see. Okay, what do we think? I think this looks so beautiful. Very earthy, very natural. It kind of looks like, hi, it kind of looks like we just went 
out to the garden, pick some beautiful things and put them together, which I think is the perfect arrangement for weekday kind of inspiration, weekday entertaining. And it, you know, having flowers greet you when you come home from a long day of work is never a bad thing either. So we're gonna put this aside and I'm gonna take the next vase here. Later on, if you follow me on Instagram at Mark J. Sievers, you, I will post all of these arrangements throughout the apartment so you can see what they look like in a real kind of setting. So, all right, so this is another vase. So this one's clearly shorter. So tall things, you know, really won't work in this. So we're gonna go back into the kitchen and find some shorter blooms. So shorter blooms, I think tea roses would look, or these spray roses would look beautiful in this. And I think this beautiful stock would look pretty in this. I think that's really nice too. Or let's see. I changed my mind. We're going to use the spray roses that are here and then this Veronica white. I think that's a beautiful combination. And I like all of these leaves on this. This will look really pretty in that vase. So, back to our work surface. Okay, so this is the Veronica White here. You can see it has gorgeous leaves. This is the beautiful spray roses. So we're gonna, these are already bundled, so I'm just gonna give them a quick snippet and when you're doing an arrangement, so the first one was very kind of organic looking. This one, we're gonna make it have a little bit more structure to it, but still very, very uh, simple and still have an organic quality. So again, we're looking for, these are gonna be a little too long. So we're looking for roses and stems that are going to be it just above the surface. So as you can see, switch to this one here, so you can see. See that's still a little long. And because the this the shape of this vase is has a kind of a wider mouth, anything you put it in is automatically going to go to the kind of spread out to the sides. So we don't want that. We want to keep this a little bit tighter. So I'm stripping the leaves so that they don't go into the water because we want to keep the water nice and clean. Changing the water every day with your flowers will really will keep them fresher, longer. And I don't add typically any food or any substances to the water. I just give them fresh, clean water every day like they get in nature. And that seems to work. If you guys have any flower tips, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, so here's gorgeous spray roses, little spray roses. So we're gonna take them, I'm gonna switch to you so you can see. We're gonna lay the first one in the palm of, palm of our hand, and we're gonna lay the other one on top at a little bit of a diagonal, it crisscrosses, and then we're gonna lay the next one and give it a twist. And lay it down on the diagonal, give it a twist. And we're gonna do this with all of the spray roses. And what you'll see is it automatically gives you this crisscross spiral of stems, and that's actually going to give the arrangement some support too. Let's see if this is not short enough. So I'm just going to cut these. Again, I'd rather make multiple cuts and take a couple extra minutes than get it wrong the first time. So. Oh, that looks really pretty. Let me zoom so you can see that. So we have some gaps here, and the gaps are what we're going to use to fill in with some of this Veronica 
a white. So I think it's a little too wispy to put in, it's a little too wispy to put in single stems. So I'm gonna do multiples, like sets of three, I think will look really great. And then tuck it in and give it some So again, we want this to look really casual, kind of like they were growing out in the garden. That was Ryan sneezing, if anybody's heard him sneezing. <laughs> He's waving to everybody. So, which you will see Ryan eventually on camera, but I have to uh, give him a little bit of training first. <laughs> okay, so this is, let me give this a little, oh, this is beautiful. So again, I'm making this up as I go because I want this to be a surprise for both you and I. But what, what makes, this is a little too, sh too long, so we're going to cut this down a little bit. What makes arrangements work really beautifully, again, we're sticking with the same color palette and we've changed the texture. So tea roses, spray roses, and regular roses as a whole wouldn't, isn't my first choice. I love things that are a little bit more formal, like the spray roses here, and then this Veronica White that's a little bit more casual and kind of it look, looks like my hair in the morning, kind of like bedhead. I love that. So that is beautiful. This is so, I'm so excited about this one. So we're going to put that aside. And then I think we'll do one more. I'm going to go back to, let's go back and look what we have in the kitchen. Hi. So in my kitchen sink, I still have, beautiful very tall stalks of rosemary i may not work with that right now let's work with this gorgeous uh fuchsia stock it has a great smell great fragrance and i'm going to show you how to do one of my favorite arrangements which are called satellite arrangements and they're much smaller and i use these all over the apartment, on bedside tables, in powder room, uh, sometimes in the kitchen. You'll see this is probably this little tiny vase, very unassuming, maybe three inches wide by five inches tall. Very unassuming vase. And this gorgeous mm, pink stock, which are, let's give that a little shake, see what comes off of that. Okay. So this, I think, is going to look really beautiful in this simple vase. And again, I like to ready all of the stems first, strip them of their leaves, lay them out. Now, if you don't have a flower market accessible to you, grocery store flowers turn fabulous, or is my really my go-to when it comes to just everyday weekly quick arrangements. If you don't have, I get flowers from every grocery store walk of life. I used to live in New York City. I used to go to the delis every few days and get fresh flowers from the deli. And it was just a lot of fun. Mixed bouquets from the grocery store work really well. If you color block things and organize things from the very beginning. And this is exactly what we're doing. So we're organizing all of these stems See, so these are nice and clean. And then we want to take, let me put them over here. So we want this to be, we want it to be nice, but maybe an inch of stem above the rim of the vase. So eyeball it, cut the first one, lay it in. That's perfect. And now we'll just, again, we're going to do the same 
technique of the laying and twisting, overlapping. Overlapping. We'll cut all the stems at the end. Everything doesn't have to be the perfectly the same height. It can be a little bit sporadic. I think that's what makes flowers so beautiful like that. They're so natural and they really can take on a life of their own. Okay, so my little stem is buried right here. This is the shortest stem right here. So we're going to cut the rest of these. And let's see, that's too tall. So we'll cut another inch or so. See, that just screams spring to me. Look at that, everybody. Isn't that great? I just think it's pretty. Love the vibrancy of this kind of fuchsia, hot pink color. So I love that. I think, I think maybe we'll do one more really, really quick because I have this. What time is it? Okay, we've been going for 27 minutes. So I was... I was wanting to do no more longer than 40. So we'll do one real quick one. And I love this one because this is like a bunch of greens all mixed together. And we're going to do this gorgeous fresh rosemary. I mean, imagine the vegetable kebab you could make with that. Mm, and it smells so fantastic. And then I bought this one too because it does have rosemary in it but it also has dried lavender. So I've kind of stuck with a color palette this week. Um, I tend to do that because I think having flowers all over the house is such a luxury and for me a necessity because they really kind of brighten my spirit. But I like to keep everything really monochromatic so that during the week I can set the table using colored linens, colored napkins, different runners, and the flowers are always in vogue. So, Okay, so this is the rosemary. I'm going to show you right here. This is the gorgeous rosemary stem. So, and yes, it smells exactly how you envision it. So the thing with rosemary, it has a very, very woody, very woody stem. I'm trying to get here. Let's try this very woody stem here. So I want to give it a fresh cut. And then what I do is take your shears and about an inch up the stem, cut it right in half. And what that does, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it opens it up and that lets the stem drink ample water. And then with rosemary, again, we want to strip off all of this extra foliage that's down below. Fresh cut. Oh. Brian, you have all kinds of stems to clean up because they're going all over the apartment. <laughs> other this is really woody so this just helps it drink as much water as possible maybe we won't use all of it because this is a lot I'll have to turn this into some other other things. Maybe I'll make some of this into a kitchen swag, which I will post on my Instagram account later on today. So, this is like very earthy, which I love. So, now the other one here, there's also some shorter rosemary. We're just going to, here we go. In. 
And you'll notice that as you're arranging all of the flowers, you probably will have to change the water right afterwards because a lot of the, a lot of the small pieces of stem and, and leaves can fall into the arrangement. So we're gonna switch back to this one and I'm gonna show you, isn't this crazy? Fresh rosemary too, it, I mean, it just fragrance, the fragrance is unparalleled. And then this, this gorgeous dried little lavender. So we're kind of tying back the lavender color to the other lavender and color from the other arrangements. And some of this rosemary even has the little blue flowers on it. So this dried lavender is really accentuating that as well. This one, I'm going to put it, there, there's a table going into my kitchen, which you don't see on camera, but I will post it later. And this is exactly where that's going to go because this is really beautiful. And then some wild, beautiful yellow. This looks like a forest in nature. What else do we have in here? Some more lavender. And this one tying with fern. I mean, that's really wonderful. Who is going to clean all this up? Ryan did not raise his hand. Okay, so that is the fourth one. So all of these flowers, I do love to tell you, were under $60 for everything, including what's left in the sink. So shop smart, buy monochromatic, and buy what's fresh. You know, if, if, if the flowers look tired or have little brown edges, don't buy them. Buy something that's really fresh and you know, talk to your grocery store flower buyer. Even if it's a big chain store, they'll most of the time be really uh, excited that you're taking an interest and actually special order things in for you or give you the freshest when their truck shipments come in. So try, you know, use what you have and uh, happy flower arranging, everybody. So if you liked my first live video, click like, click subscribe, share the love, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next time. I'm Mark Sievert. Bye. Now, how do I turn this off? Okay, here we go. Bye, guys.